So let's let's talk about something that happens a lot with people when they make mistakes in crypto. You're watching the Crypto Wonder podcast. So check this out. We're going to talk about crypto right now. We're going to talk about the behaviors of people. (laughs) The behaviors of people when they get involved with crypto, man. I I tell you, it's, it's a, it's a vicious, this is, is a space that is riddled. I mean, we have like opportunities here in cryptocurrency to really come up, to, to develop, to grow, to attain freedom, whatever that may mean to you, crypto can add to the possibilities of attaining freedom. History has shown this. For those people who who were aware of crypto 2009, 2010, 2011 and who took the chance, right? They pulled the trigger and said, "You know what? They're going to put their their money with their mouth where their mouth is and put skin in the game and held on to their crypto today they're sitting pretty they're sitting pretty but for the ones who knew who heard about it even within the last five years within the last four years within the last three years and they took a chance and held on to their crypto. Played it smart. They're sitting pretty. Many people are, are, are up. Are those people lucky? Maybe. Maybe. Perhaps also they took a calculated a well calculated risk you know a lot of bitcoin maximalists talk about having strong hands buying bitcoin and never selling no matter what so it introduced uh, the idea of holding on what they call hodl in the crypto community holding on to your crypto more than likely, you know, within your own possession, in, in your own hard wallet, cold wallet, or whatever, and not selling. The whole strong hands thing, having strong hands, you know, you you find something that's seemingly solid, you believe in it, and, and you pull the trigger. Now, not everyone can do that. That doesn't make them... That doesn't make those who can't do that necessarily weak. In my opinion. Those who don't have strong hands are not necessarily weak. That's just a a personal feeling, right? A personal understanding or opinion, if you will, that you have regarding that. And those who do have strong hands are not necessarily weak either. Are not necessarily weak. Those who don't have strong hands are not weak. Those who do have strong hands are not necessarily weak. Why I'm speaking about this is because, you know, some people... I've heard, I've heard this said, um, and I forget who said this in the cryptocurrency space, that the people who will always in crypto be successful, right, and, and become wealthy and rich are the founders 
meaning like you know the creators of of certain blockchains successful blockchains and the uh, hodlers those who hold on to their cryptos for the respective blockchains those are the ones who will succeed i don't think they're the only ones that are going to succeed though you know because it's this it's just like having two opposite ends what about everything in the middle what about the people that might hold on to certain bags but trade others you know like it's just there's a lot of room for interpretation and there's a lot of room because human nature is not as exact as that you know what i mean like everyone is does not follow the same script you know so there you have it you know it's whatever you decide to do however you decide to do it you do it the problem of course there's always something that follows all this the problem lies is the is how folks blame you know they point fingers they point fingers at others who they want to believe force them to get into certain crypto uh, currencies or projects etc all you can do is blame yourself at every given point I've seen grown people elderly people try to blame others for their mistakes in getting into crypto like it's just you know they become they become childlike they become if they're a man they become you know like man child right who's doing that why because they want to find somebody to blame what what's that what has worked for me and that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you is that i i eliminate what's not useful in general because when i try to do a bunch of different things nothing gets done or nothing gets done or rises to the occasion that i would desire because I'm in too, my hands are in too many pots. Uh, it, it just doesn't work. I can't concentrate on everything at the same time. Right? There's too much going on in crypto. The technology is, is so far advanced. And things move at such a hurried, rapid pace. That, you know, if you are working with a, a you know a project let's say it's just one project and it's been sound and solid then you start from there you you you're winning but if you want to work with 50 different projects something is going to suffer something is going to suffer and if you want to listen to 50 different points of view that will also create confusion, anxiety, lack of clarity. You're talking about listening to 50 different perspectives that don't often correlate or agree with one another about one project or two or three or ten projects. You just it's it becomes a thing of insanity after a while. It, it just gets noisy and I can't find any um, anything productive coming out of that, you know? Seriously. Seriously. I will never, I'll say this though, em emphatically, with an assured sense of confidence, I will never understand how people knowingly can choose to get involved with crypto
get involved with something that's working in crypto no longer deals with the same crypto whatever whether it's the coin or a specific project or whatever and then try to downplay something that's already working it's like using bitcoin to make a simple transaction or a trade and then you leave it alone and then you talk about how bitcoin is a scam meanwhile the blockchain or the cryptocurrency or the transaction didn't cost you much it was relatively quick um, it was it occurred between you and someone else no third party no middleman was involved um, you were able to send this crypto to another geographic location across this planet um, seamlessly and then you're going to say that Bitcoin is a scam that shows a certain lack of uh, knowledge lack of intelligence and it's a gross display of sheer ignorance you find it in crypto you find it you find it just this is why it's always uh, necessary to investigate don't take anyone's word for anything just always investigate investigate look at what's going on don't be lazy because if you're trying to get into crypto it's it's more than just about appreciating the technology let's be honest it's about the money it that's the most attractive alluring reasonable element that anyone can find or say of why they're into crypto is to make money how you choose to make money is up to you there are a great deal of scams scam projects that are out there that is not going anywhere that will not stop that is not going to end there are scammers left and right that pretend that just that's all they do and I'm not even gonna get into the pretend I've, I've talked about scammers enough we know what they do we know what they do you know I um, I've been fortunate enough in the in the few years that I've been you know studying this market studying this cryptocurrency market and I've been fortunate enough to have built a solid network a solid network and it was not something that occurred overnight because when I first got into crypto I was I was meeting people right like like having conversations with people on the internet and trying to develop networks in different communities and they didn't pan out they haven't panned out but it wasn't until the last I would say the last year or so yet year and a half year and a half I've developed a solid network and a network doesn't necessarily have to mean a community of thousands of people which is also beneficial what I'm talking about a network where you know you you if you have ideas or or you have any questions and you know I know where to go to get answers or to you know have conversation um, everything regarding crypto and maybe even things outside of crypto that might indirectly affect crypto which is a blessing it's a blessing you know we're dealing with people who have same interests like minds why not that's one of the positive things i could say that i've um experienced in in cryptocurrency you know like this is it, it's it's 
when you talk about decentralization and and forming ties and 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 bonds with people from all over the world that is one of the most um incredible positive aspects that I've been able to uh, draw f- from from dealing with this market this heavily volatile market you know and 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 it, it's 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 fun because when you're behind a steering wheel you're not being driven but it's you that's doing the driving your hands are on the steering wheel your feet are on the pedal you're looking at the mirrors but you're looking ahead though through the windshield and it's you that's sort of taking control of where you want to go uh, the feeling that comes with that, you know, for me, it brings a certain level of independence and it's akin to crypto because when you're talking about cryptocurrency, you're talking about having your own, it, being able to become your own keeper of wealth your own bank not just bank account but your own entire bank your own independent bank that no one that no one could take from you they can't confiscate it from you if you keep you know yourself and 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 your crypto well secured what does that bring it brings a certain level of freedom it brings a certain level of autonomy it brings independence it brings a certain level of control that we've been missing for a very long time I don't agree with the fact that people who have strong hands have are mentally fragile or weak. I don't agree with that at all. When a person feels that way, because I've seen it, I've seen it since P3D. It's a dap that that came out. You know, the whole strong hands, and anytime anyone sold those tokens, they were the object of ridicule, and were told that you know. They, they, you know, you have weak hands. That means you're a weak person. And the obverse was also the argument. Well, you have strong hands. That means you're weak too. No, that's not true. It's not true at all. It, it's very personal. See, the market mimics human psychology. The cryptocurrency market hum- mimics human psychology. If it weren't for complicated human beings involved with cryptocurrency... And, and and being a part of a community, different communities, because everyone can't get along. If if we all know, we all can't get along. So you're going to find irrational activity take place in the market because people can be incredibly irrational at the drop of the dime, at the drop of a dime. Their emotions cloud their judgment, their, their, their ability to draw conclusions clearly because they are emotional. I'm happy that the, the network that I've been able to be a part of naturally um, is a collective of people that remind me to to stand on something that I believe because I can't do this by myself in a way. You know, you still need a community. I could very well, you know, operate, sure, autonomously, but it's even better when you have a squad, a squad of people 
who share the same sensibilities and who want to join you, you know, on this journey. It's, it's really a blessing. And also, it's not, it's not often that I say the word friends because the term friend, I don't take lightly. I don't take lightly. I don't. And it sort of like bothers me when I see a person who says somebody else is their friend, but indirectly within the same conversation, within the same conversation, tries to denigrate them. Not understanding that the person who's really hurting is that person themselves. You understand the projecting that people do when they say, oh, so and so, you know, betrayed me. And, 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 and when that other person actually didn't betray anything, didn't do anything of the sort. And these people still this person is still, you know, throwing daggers and insults and hurling barbs that just, you know, it's just to make the other person feel bad. It's because that person is hurting. They're the ones who are truly in pain. They're the ones who are truly suffering. They're the ones who are truly afflicted. And they want to project that onto someone else. They want to project their pain onto someone else, onto others, even if it's onto an entire community within crypto. It's unfortunate. All I could do as a person, all I can do as a, a person who supports crypto and even in the community that, you know, is being, in, you know, hated upon is just wish the best. Wish the best for this person, even pray for them and hope that they find amelioration, some type of resolve to end their suffering so that they can move in a positive way and not hurt others. And not continue to hurt themselves because ultimately they're making themselves look bad. Right? Person keeps screaming, you doing this, no, you doing that, but they were supposed to be friends and it's one person who keeps displaying a certain level of hurt. The other person is smart though. The other person is very, very smart or the other people are very, very smart because they understand how things work. They understand how people can be affected by certain actions. And because their awareness is a little bit more keen than the person who's hurt, they're not going to step or kick the person while they may internally bleed but people are still human <laughs> people are still human you keep throwing dirt you keep throwing dirt you keep trying to poke poke at that tiger you keep trying to poke at that tiger or the bear or the lion don't be, don't be alarmed. When that animal, when the animal instinct kicks in and delivers the fatal strike. 